Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is essentially part three of our intercooler cooling system on this uh, Project Red Fire. If you've been following along the series, you know we did a bunch of repairs to this tank. We added a temperature sensor in there so that we could gather the uh, temp of the intercooler fluid, feed it into our data logs. We've also added a flow sensor so we could actually capture the flow and see if our pump was ever cavitating. We took it out for some test drives and we found this blower was making a lot of heat. Uh, one nice wide open throttle rip went up to, uh, I believe it was 187 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Air charge, that's really high, way too high. Now, Whirlpools do make a little bit of extra heat because they are by nature a, a air compressor. You know, it's a twin screw compressor, not a roots blower, but nothing to that extent. Something's wrong with the temps being that high. So uh, we're gonna dive into that today and try to do some figuring out. I have a couple things in mind. One of them is flow, fluid flow literally through the system. We have one inch bungs welded into the heat exchanger and I can tell the core has been modified, the intercooler core, or it's been swapped out, I don't know. I can just tell there's been changes there. We should have really good flow, but maybe we don't. The flow sensor is telling us that we're not cavitating, at least not in our rolling runs. We haven't done any hard launches from a stop yet. You know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But the fluid flow is shown as solid on the, the sensor, but I never took the time to calibrate that sensor to an actual reading in terms of gallons per minute or however you want to rate it. So although the pump's not cavitating, that flow could be really low. I don't know what those numbers really mean on my gauge on the MS3. I need to, I need to calibrate that. The other por portion I'm thinking of is the intercooler core itself because the, the temperature sensor shows us that the fluid temps are in check. They're about a 100, 100 and I think eight degrees on a hot day, which is a little warmer than a trunk setup because it is pulling a lot of heat from the engine bay right here, but it's still well within reason and should be working just fine. So if you've got decently temperatured fluid and it's flowing through there at a good rate, the only other thing would be is your core is simply not absorbing the heat. It could be a bad core or something going on. Maybe it's clogged up. We're gonna dive into this today, do some troubleshooting and figure it out. So let's get to it. All right, bumpers out of the way, so we have some access in here. Now, I know the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to undo is this return back into the reservoir because this is the end of the system on as far as the flow is concerned. I want this to flow into a bucket. Unfortunately, having done this a few times, I already know the power steering needs to come out, this guy needs to come out before I can get this out. This is such a tight fit and set setup here. Um, there's really no way around that, so let me get to it. All right, here we can see our one inch barbs that are welded onto this heat exchanger so we can get good flow in and out. I'm just draining out all the coolant so that I can uh, just test with water and make less of a mess. Something interesting though, as I'm looking at this and I'm pulling these hoses and tracing them, I noticed that somebody plumbed this thing up incorrectly. They have the inlet coming in the top and the outlet coming out the bottom. That's backwards. You should always flow into the bottom and out the top. And the reason is airflow. Uh, or bubbles rather in the system. Any bubbles that are in here are going to naturally travel to the top and you can degas the system naturally, have them flow out. You're going the reverse direction and you're going to accumulate air pockets in the top because the air is not going to work its way all the way down, all the way through and come out. So I got to thinking, I wonder what they did here. So I traced these lines up top here and the exact same thing on the intercooler core. It's flowing in the top and coming out the bottom. Uh, so I could have air trapped in both there and there. How much? I, uh, it's hard to say. You know, I've never plumbed a system in reverse on purpose just to see how much it affects the performance. So I re <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, it certainly couldn't have been helping, that's for sure. Okay, I'm about ready to start doing some flow testing, so let me show you what I got going on. I have the reservoir filled up here with water now. It's going to go straight down into my EMP pump. It's going to flow through the flow sensor up into the intercooler. From the intercooler, it's going to flow into the heat exchanger, out the heat exchanger, and we'll have it coming into this bucket. I went ahead and measured these gallon graduate marks that I marked in here. So as it kicks on, we're going to ignore the first gallon because the pump has to ramp up to speed. And then as it passes these marks here, we'll time how long that takes. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this footage here in 30 frames a second. I can just open up the raw footage and count the frames, and I'll know exactly how long it was taking to pass each of these marks and figure out our flow rate. We're also going to go ahead and feed that into the MS3. So our intercooler pump flow rate right there that we have in pulses, we'll be able to equate that to an actual gallon flow and see exactly what's happening here. All right, let's try it out. All 
All right, so that was flowing about eight and a half gallons per minute. So let's throw some perspective on that. Let's take the EMP pump, flow straight into the bucket, and then maybe add items one at a time so you can kind of see how it's affected. EMP pump with 90 degree outlet fitting only. The EMP test through flow sensor. Okay, flow test going through the intercooler core only. Alright, EMP test through the heat exchanger. Boy, am I glad I switched to water from coolant because did I make a mess. <laughs> I wish I had the camera rolling at one point. When I tested the flow of the EMP directly into the bucket, I wasn't holding it strong enough. It blew right out, it sprayed across the wall, across the uh, engine, sprayed across my face. <laughs> Those pumps are no joke. So I, looked, I went back and I looked at some of the data, some of the footage, and I was also capturing the flow sensor into the computer, which was really nice and handy to go back and review. And here's what I found. Overall, this system was flowing about eight and a half gallons per minute, as we mentioned earlier. The bucket test, you know, flowing the pump straight into the bucket. You know, initially I did it without the flow sensor to try and see if the flow sensor was a constriction in the line. And then I did it without. And it really, it flows into the bucket so violently, it's actually hard to distinguish the difference. They look about the same. So I don't think that's an issue. With the flow sensor in there, it tells me 23 gallons per minute flowing into the bucket, roughly. It's not, a, it's not a super accurate test because I only have a three gallon reservoir and that pump flows so fast and so hard, I can actually hear it sucking air. And as I'm dumping the bucket and pouring water in, it's getting a little bit of cavitation because I can't give it water fast enough. So take that 23 gallons, you know, no load flow with a grain of salt. It is a little bit, you know, not quite there. But then I started flowing through individual items through the intercooler core by itself, 10 and a half gallons per minute. Through the heat exchanger, I saw about 13 and a half flows pretty decent. Overall, eight and a half is not bad um, flow for a system. It should cool fairly decently. It's poor performing for an EMP pump though. And to give you an example, uh, the zinc has the same setup, almost. Same heat exchanger with the one inch barbs, same EMP pump, same intercooler core, I believe. They're both factory ones that have been uh, slightly modded and opened up. The uh, best I can tell, I haven't pulled this blower off yet. The only difference is this one has the tank up front, which means the zinc has a harder time. It's got to pump from the trunk all the way to the front and then all the way back to there. So in theory, it should have lower numbers, but it gets 15 gallons per minute flowing through the whole system. This one's seeing eight and a half. And I'm thinking I'm narrowing it down to the intercooler core as my issue. And either way, we want to get a better cooling core than the stock one anyhow. So grab the VMP core. Next time, we're going to go ahead and pull this blower off, throw this guy in there, and we're going to reflow test and see that, that you know those numbers should pick up. And then we're going to do some actual uh, temperature tests, see what happens. I mean, hopefully that cures that problem. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. I hope you had some fun. I hope you learned something and you know, enjoyed the flow. I certainly like picking up this data. So until next time, count to one another.